is the e-commerce coffee break the podcast dedicated to shopify store owners who want to optimize their business for maximum conversions and revenue each week you're going to get actionable advice and hear from special guests talking about various topics on how to run a profitable business on shopify learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host klaus lauter and get e-commerce insights you can't Google. Welcome to the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today we want to talk about conversion rate optimization. Now you want to think about conversion rate optimization when it comes to cart, but obviously there are more points in the customer journey when it comes to optimizing your conversions. One of the part is generating leads, collecting email addresses and all of this. So one way to do this are pop-ups. They are the best way to generate leads and sales for your e-commerce store. However, the success of your pop-up depends on converting visitors using relevant content and compelling call to actions. As an expert today on the show, I have Eric Malko with me. He's the personalization ambassador of Optimum and host of the Innovators at Love podcast. After overseeing online marketing programs for major companies in Texas, Eric moved to Eastern Europe and started working in SaaS. Since then, he has worked for customer personalization obsessed startups like Bonjoro and Optimum and is currently providing mentoring for SaaS companies who are starting partnerships, marketing channels, and want to create fun, personalized shopping experiences with these. Hi, Eric. How are you today? I'm pretty good, Klaus. Thanks for having me here on the show. Eric, give me a little bit of a background. What got you into conversion rate optimization? What got you in this whole e-commerce? When I think about CRO, I also think about CVO, which is customer value optimization. And to me, that really means personalizing the user experience for your audience, for your visitors, for your customers. I initially got into personalization with Orjuro, which is a personalized video email platform that makes it very easy to send personal videos to your audience. And then I was very impressed with the Optimum platform platform because they're able to offer personalized shopping experience for anybody that comes to your website, even if you don't really have that much data on them, even if they're an organic visitor or they came in through a social media channel and you just don't have information about them, but you can still offer real-time personalized experiences with their platform. Okay. Now, when it comes to conversion rate optimization, there's a lot of misconceptions around that topic. Give me a bit of an overview of what you see most often. When I think about CRO, I think about short-term thinking. And I think marketers are out there for the quick wins. Quick wins are like, hurry up and try to get that email subscription so you can get that email address and start marketing to them with email marketing campaigns or trying to create this sense of urgency like, hey, buy now, order now, shop now. You've got maybe one hour left for this. Otherwise, the special is going to go away. So they're trying to get you to pull out your wallet and make that purchase very quick. Or another bad example is using a paid media ad. And when you click on that ad, thinking that you're actually going to see a landing page about the ad that you clicked on, you clicked on, it has nothing to do with that ad. And those are just a few types of bad experiences. And then of course, Klaus, of course, when you go to a new website and within a few seconds, you see the pop-up asking you to subscribe for the newsletter or enter your email address for a 10% discount. That one just is very annoying. What's an annoying one for you, Klaus, for a bad experience here? It's exactly the one that you just mentioned, the one that pops up immediately. So it doesn't give me any time to figure out on which side I am. So it is just right into my face. Sometimes I see sites that have like two or three pop-ups overlaying. So they're using different apps and they're all firing a pop-up. And then obviously this sort of boring thing with the 5%, 10%, 50% discount. So store owners do not put really any thought in there. And then they're complaining that their margin is too low because they have to fire so many discount codes out there. So I think that's where a lot of people end up in their thinking process. You're quite right on that one. So how can you solve that problem? Yeah, those are definitely some bad experiences. I associate all of those experiences with conversion rate optimization. What we're trying to do is find to tell brands, take the long-term approach like Amazon does, right? Think of the entire customer experience. Think of customer lifetime value. Think about educating and helping customers at every step of the journey. And so don't be so quick to rush and try and make that conversion. Instead, Try to help visitors in your audience and even returning customers at every step of the journey. So I want to share a couple of examples of what you can do. The first example is booting that email list. Now, why is that is so important? Because a returning visitor or a multi-session visitor usually converts and spends at about two to three times the amount of a first-time 
visitor. So how do you get that person to come back? Well, obviously all the marketers out there, they use that pop-up message that you talked about earlier, where it's like, sign up here, we'll give you a 10 or 5% discount and just give us your email address. Here's an example. That conversion rate, if you're just asking for an email address to give a 10% discount or whatever percent discount, probably gets you about a three to 4% rate. This method will easily triple that. And so this method is called a conversational pop-up. It basically goes like this. Hey there, how about 10% off your next purchase? And we'll give you a red wine recommendation. Now, this example is specifically for, let's say you're selling wine, but you can use this for anything. So you're a first-time visitor. You go to this online retailer. They sell wine. You navigate to a page that's about red wines. Maybe it's about Cabernets or Merlots or something. And then after you've been on the site for a little while, maybe at least 30 seconds, you're on this page, you see a little message that just says, hey, welcome. Which region do you like your red wines from? And give them a choice or choices. Argentina, Portugal, France, South Africa, the US. And once they click on that region, you can now offer them a discount code and ask if they would like to receive news and offers about red wines in that specific region. And if they would like to, they can just enter their email address. What you've done here is that not only have you tripled your conversion rates, because that's what we're seeing when we look at the data and we ask our clients, you know, what kind of results are they experiencing? But now you're able to segment that data into your email marketing strategy, which means those people, because of segmentation, they're more likely to open their emails, they're more likely to engage with them, and they're more likely to come back to your site, make a purchase. Again, you can use other examples. Maybe you're in the health and fitness area and you can have a little welcome message that says, hey, are you here? Are you trying to gain more muscle or lose weight or maybe sleep better? And then once they answer, then you can say, great, would you like content and offers around that specific thing that they clicked on? Once they enter their email address, of course, you can segment them and then begin personalizing their email communication after they leave your site. That's just one easy example of how you can triple your email subscription rates and get more people to come back to visit your brand. Optimonk is one of the leaders in the market and has tons of data. So I want to know from your side a little bit more about when is the right moment to show a pop-up? Obviously, there's different ways to do that. So for a certain page, when is the right moment and where in the customer journey? Can you give me some examples there? Yeah, it really depends on what the goal is. I mean, for a conversational pop-up, we recommend that they spend at least 30 seconds and that they've at least clicked on something to give you an idea of how you can further personalize that experience. So in the case of the red wine, they were on the site and then they clicked to a page that was about red wines. But you can do the same thing if they click to a page that was about white wines and ask them, where do you like your white wines from? And showcase countries there. If you just have a regular strategy right now, where you just have a regular pop-up, you're showing the pop-up after 30 seconds, we recommend experimenting. And instead of showing that pop-up, use an exit intent pop-up and show a pop-up where the person is trying to leave the website. You'll typically double your conversion rates if you use an exit intent pop-up as opposed to just a generic pop-up trying to get somebody's email address. When it comes to different devices, talking about desktop, mobile devices, what's the experience there? How do you handle pop-ups for a mobile phone? We have a lot of clients. They have mobile-friendly websites, but a lot of it really is dependent on the browser. We're seeing excellent rates across mobile and desktop and iPad, but the browser is where it's a little bit different. And the reason why it's a little bit different is because of the cookie settings. If somebody goes to Optimac and then reads, but they're on Chrome, there's a good chance that we're still able to track them through Chrome. And we're able to personalize that experience for at least 30 days. But if they're using a browser like Safari, then maybe instead of 30 days, it's only seven days. So it's really the browser more so than the device. Okay. Now, email addresses is one thing. Some people want to grow their SMS list and do mobile marketing through text messages. Is that something that you guys support as well? Absolutely. There's been influencers and bloggers that have written about this method of collecting both the email address and text message. In fact, I think they even coined a term called the Trojan horse. It's a method if you just go to YouTube and type in Trojan horse and you can see this example, just kind of give you a quick overview is after you get somebody's email address, let's say you're doing a conversational pop-up, then you can actually do another incentive like, hey, would you like to increase that discount offer from 10% to 20%? If yes, then give us your phone number and now you have a 20% discount offer as opposed to just a 10% offer. And so the conversion rates work really, really well. Obviously, if a person is there and is purchase ready, 
they want that 20% discount, they're going to leave their phone number. Yeah, I think a very important point that you said there, you should have a two-step process. People are obviously very concerned about their data privacy. So once they have given you an email address, then the likelihood that they give you the phone number for SMS marketing is higher. I see a lot of pop-ups, they asking you straight in your face for the phone number. And I think they will have very, very low conversion rates on that because there's just not any trust built at that point. Absolutely. You said something very important there is once they gave you their email address, they're more likely to give you their phone number. And we call that micro engagement. And so what we're advising is before you even ask for the email, make them do a micro engagement. And that's by answering the question again. Like the red wine, what location do you let your red wines from? If you're a health and fitness store, are you here to lose weight or build muscle or sleep better? Have them do that little micro engagement that's not asking for anything in return. All you're asking for is basically information. And it's valuable information because once you have that, you can start segmenting them and start personalizing their experience on the website and also start personalizing their experience through email marketing. And once they make that micro engagement, they're more likely to give you their email address if they feel like they're getting value out of it. So good point there, Klaus. I do want to talk real quickly about global e-commerce. It's a trend that we saw spike during COVID, $5.5 trillion in 2022. This is expected to grow considerably over the next few years. One of the clients that uses Optimon, they do something quite fascinating. They're called Woodhouse Clothing. If you visit their website, they're a U.S. retailer. And if you visit their website from abroad, let's say you're in South Africa, you go to their website and they'll likely have a little welcome message that says, welcome to South Africa. And if they're going to share with you their shipping information in that little welcome message, it may say, hey, we ship to South Africa, whatever the local currency is, are free. All the taxes, any of the other charges are already included in the total price. And so once you see that, it establishes this trust, this reassurance that, hey, I can shop from this brand. I'm not going to waste my time here only to get to the checkout page and realize, oh, I don't really understand their shipping information or their terms and conditions. You get that right up front immediately. You feel reassured knowing that, oh, wow, they delivered to my location. So this is pretty cool. Let me continue shopping. That's one of the little features that anybody who is selling globally to international visitors and customers should, I highly recommend. It's just a great way to reassure global visitors that are coming to your site. Yeah, I really like that example. Obviously, personalization, customization for that specific shopper is very important. Now, question here from my side is Optimum provides these dynamic pop-ups. What kind of data can you pull and from where can you pull this data? Yeah, without knowing anything about them, you can pull from their IP location. You can even have like a little nanobar message at the bottom that doesn't interrupt their experience. But if they're coming from Germany, for example, you could say, welcome from Germany, welcome Germany, and have like a little driven flag there and let them know in a very subtle way, like we ship to Germany. The IP will pull the location. You can also pull by channel. If you're getting visitors, let's say for Instagram or maybe Facebook or even Twitter, you can actually have a little message that says, oh, you know, we love Instagram. Here's 10% offer just for you. Or you can just even use a, a survey. We love visitors from Instagram. What are you looking for? And the reason why I bring that up is because personalization, it may seem like, oh, this is a nice to have, but really it's about serving specific content to different segments. And one of the segments you want to look at are those that are low performing. So if you go into your GA account, Google Analytics, and look for segments or basically traffic by source, by channel, see which ones that have the lowest conversion rates or the highest bounce rates. Those are the ones that you need to look at. Why are they leaving my site and not sticking around? Maybe it's a segment that's coming from your Instagram, your Instagram followers. And so instead of just trying to get them to sign up for a 10% discount, maybe you want to ask them, hey, we love it that you're here. Can you tell us what are you looking for? And once you start looking at the segments that are low performing and trying to get feedback from them, and once you have that feedback, then you can make changes to your website and start improving your conversion rates and improving those high balance rates as well. Good point that you're touching on their work before you start implementing a system like Optimunk is quite important. Just gave one example there on what you can look into Google Analytics and find out. Is there other parts or other bits and pieces of homework which someone should think about before they are starting working with a pop-up system? I think so. I think they should look at other brands out there who had success with the Optimunk platform and that will give them ideas on what they should really kind of focus on. I want to use the Bladejet example. They're a Shopify store founded in 2017. By the end of 2018, it was one of the most successful Shopify stores out there, over half a million customers. It was featured on the Ellen Show. 
But how did they get so successful? And there were some of the things that they did, very smart marketing activities they did using Optima. One of the things they implemented was they saved card abandoners. And so they had a little pop-up that appeared if somebody had thrown out the card, but they hadn't made a purchase within a certain amount of time. That alone, by offering like a quick 10% discount and encouraging them to return whenever they were ready to make a purchase, they got like 15,000 email subscribers within a short amount of time. That was just one tactic. Another thing they implemented was this little nano bar. It was displayed at the bottom of the website. When you're scrolling, you would see it there. It wasn't really too intrusive, but it was great. If you signed up, you got like a 10% discount code that you can use whenever you were ready. And they got like 20,000 email subscribers within just four months. And then one thing I highly recommend, and not many advertisers do this, but if you're spending money on Facebook ads or Google paid media ads, one of the things they did is they changed the headlines of the landing page and to mimic the copy that was on the paid media ad. And they did that through using UTM campaigns and UTM segmentation. That was in the ad itself. They brought that over to Optima. They didn't have to create many different landing pages. They were able to just use their UTM coding. And so if a person clicked on an ad that was about Blendjet's portability, the headline was around the portability benefits. But if it was around the self-cleaning feature, then the headline of the landing page talked about the self-cleaning feature. If it was about USB rechargeable, then the headline talked about the USB, how easy it was to charge. And that was something that they did had it increased like conversions by almost 40 percent doing that one little trick there that's very easy to do within the platform yeah it's a great tip i have used that in the past and it's around for many many years very few people know about it do your homework if you're going for keywords just a tip there is don't use competitor keywords they will show up on your webs that's a pretty good tip but other than that it's a really good tip now optimum obviously is available for shopify as an app and i reckon you integrate in a lot of other apps is that right woocommerce wordpress active Camp campaign, MailChimp. We have over a hundred direct integrations, including Shopify, Shopify Plus, Rural Mozilla. Cool. Before we come to the end of our coffee break today, just tell me a little bit about the pricing. How does that work? Yeah, we have a free plan. So you can try it out for a couple of weeks and it doesn't matter how small you are. I always recommend that, hey, if you're getting less than 5,000 visitors, probably just want to ask a simple question like, hey, were you able to find what you were looking for? But if you're getting more than 5,000 visitors to your site a month, then that's when the platform can actually improve your conversions, improve your email subscription rates, improve your less card abandoners. That's when you should really start thinking about a personalization platform. So that way you're getting the best ROI for your marketing spend. But we do have three different models. It really depends on the amount of traffic. If you're getting a lot more traffic, then you go to the medium tier. And then of course, if you're getting a substantial amount of traffic, you go into the higher tier. The last thing I would like to say, Klaus, is that I have two words for Optima. And those two words are no code. Very simple to use, designed for marketers, a lot of drag and drop functionality. I don't have a technical background. I know how to use it. And if I can use it, pretty sure any other market out there can use it as well. Yeah, that would be a relief to for a lot of Shopify merchants that are small and medium businesses where a solopreneur or small teams that they don't need to outsource to implement. Cool. Where can people find out more about OptiMonk? Yeah, go to OptiMonk.com, O-P-T-I-M-O-N-K.com. If you're interested in more about personalization, we have a guide to personalization. The really cool, I think it lists like 30 different examples of the various personalization tactics that you can implement with OptiMonk. So check that out. You just go to our website, you'll see a link to it as well. Cool. I will put the link in the show notes as always, then you're just one click away. Eric, thanks so much for your time. I think that was a very good overview of what you can do and that pop-ups are not really a boring thing and can contribute a lot to the results and success of your store. Thanks so much. Thank you, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Before you go, I would like to invite you to become part of the e-commerce Merchant Pro community to get actionable advice from other Shopify merchants who already have achieved what you are aiming for. Our community is a safe place to actively grow your online retail business with the support of the most amazing and helpful group of e-commerce entrepreneurs behind you. Running a Shopify business is tough. Don't do it alone. Join us now. It's free. You will find the link in the show notes. Also, if you think your online store has conversion or marketing issues and you would like to have a fresh set of eyes on your business, then drop me an email at klaus at klauslauter.com and let me know a little bit about your business. It might be beneficial for you to have me look over your store, offers, emails, and ads, and get an unbiased outside perspective and guidance to help you mo make most of your online business. And finally, if you enjoy the show, please rate and review in the app that you're listening so that I can get bigger and more impactful guests on the podcast. Thank you as always for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Until next time, and I talk to you soon.